in honor of Black History Month. Black history right here in northern Minnesota. Our Amanda Ecke is here now with our special report. For many Minnesotans, going up north for the weekend is just a way of life. But for one group of people, a lake in north central Minnesota is a refuge in the middle of cabin country, a legacy that they must hold on to. It is called Lake Adney, a hidden gem in Crow Wing County. For nearly 100 years, African Americans have been coming there to own a piece of paradise. Now, he was a mailman, a community mailman, and I would see him off and on and ask him, how you doing, Mr. Murray? He said, I'm doing great. And what have you been up to? Been up to paradise. And he would always make reference to paradise. And then I finally asked him a little bit about paradise. And he told me about the lake, a little bit about the, uh, the history of the lake. And I said, wow, you know, we'd like to maybe check that out someday. A piece of paradise, a starry-eyed wonderland place like no other. They call it Lake Adney. There's wonderful short stories in here about people's experiences from uh, not just the city, but from other places across the country yeah. that would come up and spend a weekend or maybe a week, yeah. you know, uh, fishing, playing cards, cooking, eating, just having a great time. Tell me a little bit about back in the 1980s when you were here, when you first came here. How, what did it look like in terms of the black folks that were here on the lake? I would say probably 80% wow. on this uh, side of the lake were, were black folk. He was a military guy and then he worked for a mining company or something. He bought up a big but portion But he brought up, it. yeah. And sold the plots off to blacks. Oh, wow. Okay. I, I mean, that was by design, mm -hmm. you know, because they know that, you know, this was the only show in town for us. History, despite its retching pain, must be remembered. Well, history means so much to me because both my grandparents on my mother's side and my dad's side were born during slavery. And my mother always was a, a very thrifty person. Mm -hmm. And we had chickens in our backyard. So she'd go out and run and grab a, grab a chicken and she'd wring your neck and she'd we'd eat it for dinner and we'd pick the feathers off. Mm. And she'd have a bag, she'd store feathers in it. And when she'd get enough feathers, she'd make a pillow. She'd get enough feathers, she'd make a mattress. So I, I was brought up knowing that you just value everything. I spent a lot of time as a child with my grandfather and I used to get a real kick out of the freedoms that I would have with my grandparents that I didn't have with my parents. And I, I distinctively remember um, uh, being able to feel like the, the big kid because I had a lawnmower up here that I could ride to cut. There were a, a lot of African Americans that were working there. There were a few people that knew about this area up north and we're trying to get people to come up here and just kind of relax and go fishing and have a good time. Um, and that snowball to, oh, we really like it up here. Well, maybe we should buy a place. And some of those close, close friends uh, of my grandfather, all of them bought property at one time or another on this lake. And I feel very fortunate to have had parents and grandparents who had the foresight to, to see something that they really enjoyed and to put the hard work in to get it to where we are now. At one time, the cabins on Lake Adney were owned by African Americans, not only from St. Paul and Minneapolis, but Omaha and Chicago. A handful of black owned resorts in the area drew vacationers from as far away as New York and California, all by word of mouth. There's a cow horn back here, Bell. They ring it. Right over as down far, the table. No, it's over here. As far as oh, I can go, right there, yeah. as a kid, I could always hear that. And I was like, all right, well, I got to go back for lunch. I'll see y'all later. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But just to have a, I felt safer here, even yeah. though there was animals and things that were dangerous, mm -hmm. being able to go off at a distance that I did in the city, yeah. which is, which is kind of wild. And I can just imagine what kind of release and space people growing up in a segregated country or 
an environment that wasn't always friendly to be able to come up to a place like this and to go out and to be authentic and be comfortable and safe you know you go back ready to fight the world i don't care what i gotta go through i only got this for five days Dude, after five days i'm i'm out i'm back up there so I, I could see it and i don't i don't see it going anywhere in our in our family um but like, like i said our goal is to make it a little bit better mm -hmm. every time we come up here we're gonna leave it a little bit better both of these brothers were chicago policemen really that knew each wow. other wow and breckenridge told giles about the lake mm -hmm and he eventually moved up here and built a place. Properties along Lake Adney have changed hands as the years have gone by. There are fewer black cabin owners along its shores than decades ago. The saying goes, if you're going to live, leave a legacy. Make a mark on the world that can't be erased. For those on Lake Adney, this means everything. But just the fact that uh, even if they took a little less money, they wanted to make sure that our <coughs> legacy as the people here in Minnesota and and the Twin Cities would, would, would go on for you know forever. I feel like I'm holding up the family legacy. It's not just her, it's not just my dad, it's not just my grandfather, it's not I, I feel that it is really our entire family. This is the family property. The life. <laughs> Everybody should feel that they can come up here whenever they want to come up here and do. I mean, because, you know, when we talk about the legacy, you know, we're tying in something that's bigger than us. You know, we're talking about being able to participate in the world and, and all the beautiful things we get to participate in. Like, we, we, we staked our flag. You know, going back to finding a place, you stake your flag in the ground. That's mine. That's ours. So, I mean, it's, it's too much pride in family and memories. It means helping to create family. That's what I think that's what I I think most about Adney. It creates an opportunity for you to experience family in different ways. You know, when you're in the city, family means I'm running from this place to that place. I'm taking somebody to this lesson. I'm taking you to this meeting. Or I'm going to this meeting. But when we get up here, family, figure out what you can do together. As a poor boy, and I mean really poor boy growing up, the opportunity we had to enjoy the uh, outdoors was a camp at the Overboys Club for uh, poor children in our community. Fast forward, being given the opportunity to be here, it's just, uh, it's unimaginable, you know, for a young boy back at, at that time. And then for us to, uh, to be able to be here for 40 years. You know, very rarely do you get to cover a story that really grabs you, really makes you take off the mask of journalism and really understand and sit down with people. I can say that the people I've met on Lake Adney have indescribably changed my worldview. I want to thank Nathaniel, Vicki, Malik, Philip, Skip, as well as the Murray Boyd family for their contributions to this piece and sharing their beautiful stories with me. Now, the Minnesota Historical Society has gathered oral histories of some of the African-American cabin owners on Lake Adney. This is one of the many books. This uh, one details Nathaniel, Vicki, and Malik's family. You know, there are so many stories from the past 100 years still yet to be uncovered on the lake. And as was said, Darren, black ownership has decreased on the lake. However, the legacy still lives on. Now, to find out more about my conversations with the families on Lake Adney, visit WDIO.com. Powerful story, Amanda. Thank yeah. you.